Hello everybody and welcome to English Grammar with Amaya sir and uh, today the lecture is for the 9th standard we're talking about the uh, SSE board 9th standard unit 3.1 it's a wonderful poem Silver written by Walter de la Mer <laughs> remember the pronunciation Walter de la Mer that is how you should pronounce it. What are we going to deal with? We, are, we will go ahead and see the full explanation. We will uh, take a, a look at the figures of speech. We'll study them in detail. We are going to study the critical appreciation. And finally, we will go through an important textual assignment, a textual exercise. So let's get started straight away with this wonderful poem, Silver. As you can see, the title is Silver and uh, it's written by Walter Jean de la Mer. Now you see his image here, uh, 1873 until 1956. He was really a well known poet of his time. He was an English poet, short story writer, and novelist. Most of his creations were for children, that is something that is noteworthy. He was honored with Order of Merit, that is abbreviated as OM. You have the image as well. He was also bestowed with Order of Companions of Honor. Honestly speaking, this was new for me as well. I will be very honest with you. That's abbreviated as CH and uh, the image is uh, provided as well. I will say it again that this honor <coughs> was uh, new for me as well when I was preparing my notes. So the poem, you can see, now we are going to start with the poem, but uh, let me tell you that it's a couplet sort of an arrangement, so two lines at a time and it is a short but a very sweet poem. Silver here is not for the metal silver. The poem is all about moon and uh, the, the moonlight is referred to as silver. So all of those, uh, uh, you know, who are watching this and are moon lovers, well, yeah, sure, so this poem uh, is what you would like. A very small poem, but a very cute poem. So let's get started and let me read the first couplet. Slowly, silently, now the moon walks the night in her silver shoon. Again. Slowly, silently, now the moon walks the night in her silver shoon. Now silver here stands for the moonlight. I have said that already. And uh, there is an archaic word meaning Old English. The word is shoon, which means shoes. It's not used nowadays. It's not contemporary. It is an archaic term. What is important here to study is that moon is given the feminine gender. Point to be noted. Look at the second line in the couplet. Walks the night in her silver shoon. In her silver shoon. So moon is given the feminine gender. And that is definitely something that you must make a note of. As far as grammar is concerned, yes, we will study the figures of speech. Slowly, silently, you can see that it's alliteration. The sound S has been repeated for a better poetic effect. Walks the night in her silver shoon. Well, that's personification, obviously. The moon is given the human quality of walking. Remember, we are talking about the moon, not a human. So, walks the night in her silver shoon definitely is personification. More importantly, uh, the moon is said to be wearing shoes. Okay. I hope that uh, no separate time uh, be given for this. You should just pause the video and resume when you are ready. Let me proceed to the next slide. Okay then, pay 100% undivided attention. This way and that she peers and sees silver fruit upon silver trees. Ah, how beautiful it is. This way and that she peers and sees. Basically, all over. Okay. So, this way and that she peers and sees. Again, she peers and sees. Silver fruit upon silver trees. Now, again, I'm saying, uh, we all know there are no silver fruits. You're talking about the moonlight here. Peers means look with focus or with concentration this is different than p e a r do not be confused and again the point to be noted is that moon is given the feminine gender she peers and sees i have no doubt that uh, those of you who really love the moon watching it for hours together it's fun and really 
by the way this poem is titled silver had this been uh, a poem about the sun then it would have been gold silver yellow those kind of shades the poem probably would have been gold something like that as far as the figures of speech are concerned well lots to study first this way and that clearly there are opposite terms is it not this way and that so it's antithesis two opposite words this and that occur in the same line let me remind the students again that it is not sufficient for you just if you write the name of the figures of speech to, to get that one full mark you have to name and explain the figures of speech so yes you must write the name correctly that is with the correct spelling and of course you will have to provide a suitable and correct explanation why you think so second one she peers and sees now peers and sees is almost the same that's why this is tautology remember the spelling is l o g y but it's logy tautology always remember l o g y is logy it's biology zoology tautology technology helps personification as well why do i say that she peers and sees the moon is given the human quality of seeing it's an abiotic component is it not not living so personification whenever you have more than one figure of speech that applies to a line you have to write them both or as many as are applicable last but not the least the second line of the couplet silver fruit upon silver trees you clearly can see that the word silver has been repeated for a better poetic effect and therefore this is repetition r e p e t i t i o n there is no a in the spelling of repetition often students go wrong here and you know that is what i really feel sad about when you know the answer you must not lose marks okay now if you want you can pause the video if you want to make your notes but allow me kindly please to go to the next slide all right give me your 100% undivided attention guys for the next couple one by one the casement sketch the meaning of casements is windows you can see i have provided the images her beams beneath the silvery thatch beams a ray of light in fact a beam is a ray of light so many such rays beams beneath is directly underneath and thatch is a roof as shown with the arrow and the pointing towards the image so one by one the casement sketch her beams beneath the silvery thatch so everything has turned silver because of the moonlight so it's a you know clear skies and there is maybe it's nearing the full moon night so everything is silver Uh, as far as the language study is concerned moon is given the feminine gender we've been seeing that for the past three slides now her beams moon is given the feminine gender unlike here in india where uh, moon is referred to as chanda mama and not Ch chanda mami yeah not chanda mami <laughs> that's nice so it's chanda mami here according to walter de la mer remember that's the name of the poet that's how you make the pronunciation okay let's go through figures of speech her beams beneath alliteration because of the sound be that is getting repeated one by one again repetition we saw that uh, in the last slide as well there was an example of repetition r e p e t i t i o n no a in the spelling of repetition i'm sure there are new words you learned here okay casements in particular thatch for a roof maybe you knew that but how about shoon which was an archaic term huh all right pause the video please allow me to go to the next one if you are ready if you have resumed your video after the pause give me your 100% undivided attention for the next topic couched in his kennel like a log with paws of silver sleeps the dog I don't know if you have been noticing this but for all the couplets the rhyme scheme is aa is it not so you can if the rhyme scheme is asked you can say it's aabb or you can simply say aa because the arrangement is in a couplet format so it's aabb ccdd and in that sense so this is yet another example log and dog 
couched what do you mean by that bent down or lie down okay couched in his kennel you can see kennel is a small shelter for a uh, dog i have no doubt that you all know this famous cartoon series tom and jerry is it not so you know very well what a kennel means paws are the animal's foot with claws and the soft padding log is a part of the trunk of a large tree you have the image now the paws of silver why do you think is paws of silver again everything is uh, silver when there's proper moonlight that's why the poet likes to imagine things like that you can see that there is no language study here but there is a lot of grammar that's why you have two sections for grammar let's see them one by one like a log this is simile uh, s i m i l e is how simile is spelt and why is that a simile you got to watch out for words like as and like that shows that there is a direct comparison what words did i say guys as and like this shows that there is direct comparison so what's the direct comparison here like a log so a log has been directly compared with the dog who was couched in his kennel so there is a direct comparison there between the two between the two rhyming words with paws of silver now what's that that's a metaphor why is that a metaphor because paws are implicitly this is a good word that's probably one advantage of watching the videos on our channel there is always some variety that you will see if you watch all the videos in detail i still get emails about how we can watch the entire video for like half an hour in one sitting nobody has asked you to watch it in one sitting okay if the video is like half an hour third for 30 minutes the duration of the video is 30 minutes well watch it for 10 minutes a day finish in three days you don't have to you know devour it all in one at one sitting uh, before we go further to the next grammar section another example to expatiate on this point imagine you like reading books okay now when you pick up a big book a big novel sizable one is it is it obligatory for you to finish it in one sitting oh, hell no you definitely take a break you probably return it to the library after three or four days a week you might take even an extension you that's the way you enjoy it so that's the way even the lectures can be enjoyed now more so that you are at home uh, the schools are probably not likely to reopen probably now they're saying definitely until 31st of december so you have a lot of time at hand watch the videos at your leisure when you are in a mood to learn don't tell me that you are in a mood for some fun and then you tune into my channel which is like an educational channel and then grumble about studies and what do you expect to see here that's another childish uh, comment that sometimes i receive so anyway uh, whenever you have time divide the entire length and then enjoy the video learn something i was talking about the word that i was teaching you for indirect the word is implicitly i repeat the word is implicitly which means indirect and kindly use this word if you are talking about metaphor so simile the one just above that is a direct comparison while metaphor is an indirect comparison but instead of just using a plain simple ordinary word like indirect why don't you go ahead and say that the paws are implicitly compared that, that sounds much better there implicitly compared to be of silver next pause of silver sleeps now here there is alliteration uh, the ellipses at the start show that this line is not complete some part has been omitted just to save space here the sound s has been repeated for a better poetic effect uh, the fourth one is with pause of silver sleeps the dog this is inversion take a look at the line again with paws of silver sleeps the dog so clearly you can see the words are not in their logical order the correct word order should be the dog sleeps with paws of silver let's do it one more time the poet what's the name what's the name walter de la mer okay uh, not to confuse mer with m a y o r okay the words are not in the correct order the poet has written with paws of silver sleeps the dog 
the better order is logical order is the dog sleeps with paws of silver that's why this is inversion uh, lots to study i'm sure you want to pause you should pause the video and then uh, whenever you are ready resume let me go to the next slide give me your 100% undivided attention well there was a, an email i received that sir in recent videos we haven't heard you say this line therefore i am ensuring that uh, you know i say it would have incorporated that as a part of my explanation let's continue from their shadowy coat the white breast speak of doves in silver feathered sleep doves is the right sound the pronunciation it's not doves it's doves and there is a clear difference between dove and a pigeon uh, they belong to the same family if you look at the uh, the classification the of the animal kingdom yeah sure but then there is a difference in the size dove is a smaller bird okay from their shadowy coat now what's that don't confuse this coat with c o a t this is c o t e which means a small shelter for birds and that's why i provided uh, the image i'm sure you have seen such coats is it not uh, animal uh, sorry bird lovers ornithologist what word did i use just now guys ornithologist again ornithologist a bird watcher okay they often build such coats and uh, they, they, they are a nice shelter for the birds especially when it's raining during scorching summers the small shelter for birds or mammals of doves in silver feathered sleep again the feather of the birds they appear silvery everything is silver a poem kind of is self explanatory from the title itself because it's clear night because there's sufficient moonlight looks like everything is silver all around peep is to look quickly i believe a few slides ago we studied the word peers and sees and now here you have peep which is look quickly in order to you know make an observation peep now there is a language study here let's see what that is doves and pigeons belong to the same family but they vary in size they vary in size okay v a r y not v e r y figures of speech from their shadowy coat inversion the correct word order should be the white breast doves uh, peep from their shadowy coat yeah you can see that the ellipses show that the words are missing from the entire thing but you can refer to the line from the poem that you have there so from their shadowy coat the white breast speak the correct order should be the white breast speak from their shadowy coat okay here you can see that the image provided also shows that uh, they have the white coating they are white and on top of that it's a clear moonlit night it's a clear moonlit night that's why Uh, everything appears even more silvery in that case silver feathered sleep that's alliteration simple enough the sound s is repeated for a better poetic effect okay let me go to the next one now give me your 100% undivided attention enjoy a harvest mouse goes scampering by we were talking about the difference between doves and pigeons and here it is a harvest mouse smaller okay so the mouse uh, harvest mouse is a different kind of a, a species and so i have provided you with uh, the image the smaller goes scampering by what do you mean by scamper uh, run with quick little steps now you must have if you are a cricket enthusiast or you watch cricket and you uh, enjoy english commentary then you will definitely have heard of this the batsman scampered through for a single so quick with quick little steps but uh, you know just run fast you know the harvest mouse is quite quick with silver claws and silver eye again why is everything in the poem silver because of the moonlight i will say the special feature at the start was moon is given the feminine gender we talked about how moon here is the chanda mami instead of the chanda mama all right language study oops and i beg your pardon yeah so claws uh, and claws are homophones you have this word c l a w s that's claws 
And C-L-A-U-S-E is a grammar term. They are homophones. So basically, what are homophones? Homophones are the words that have the same, same sound, but they have different spelling, and of course, they mean different things. So C-L-A-W-S and C-L-A-U-S-E, both are clause, but they are different. They are examples of homophones. As far as the figures of speech is concerned, this is one entry. Silver clause and silver eye repetition because the word silver is being repeated for a better poetic effect no a in the spelling of repetition i don't like it when students unnecessarily make an unforced error and they lose half a mark just for the lack of correct spelling well, that should not happen you can pause the video let me please go to the next one you have seen this by accident earlier by the way, before I start reading the couplet, once again, you must have noticed thus far, every time uh, in the couplet, the rhyme scheme is AA. The first, both the lines, okay, in the in the couplet, they rhyme. So it's AA, or you can say AA, BB, and so on. Let me read the lines now. And moveless fish in the water gleam. The meaning of gleam is shine brightly or brilliantly. I like this word. Bert has definitely made use of some good words here, okay? Uh, one of them was archaic, of course. And moveless fish in the water gleam by silver reeds in a silver stream. Reeds is a grass growing in a marshy area, and that's why you have been provided with that image for better understanding as far as language study is concerned. The poem has a couplet arrangement and that's why you see that uh, I have kept this for the last couplet of the poem and the rhyme scheme for the entire poem is AABB. If you want to just stop at AA, it's understandable because the arrangement, you already studied that it's a couplet sort of an arrangement. So it is perfectly okay uh, for you to say that the rhyme scheme is AA. I, however, prefer AABB. As far as grammar is concerned, silver reads in a silver stream, yet another repetition example for the word silver. Why do I say yet another? In the previous slides as well, we saw silver fruit upon silver trees. You remember? Here you have silver reads in a silver stream. The, the entities are changing. The components of the nature are changing, but the word remains silver. Fantastic. You know, fantastic. Uh, this is, I, I love such poems that are short, sweet, convey some imagery or maybe have a storyline, sort of a ballad. It's wonderful, beautiful poem. Of course, study it very carefully, study the figures of speech. You already revealed the rhyme scheme and the couplet sort of an arrangement. That could be a poetic device question. And, uh, and now I think we will uh, deal with this textual exercise I was talking about before we go ahead and study the critical appreciation. Uh, what So what is this? Remember, earlier in the video, I was uh, talking about how if the poem, um, had the poem been about the sun, everything would be golden. And there you go, golden glow. So now what they have, this is a very creative exercise. I like this. The board actually wants you to provide the ending with rhyming words. That's a challenge. Now, it is not quintessential that you do what I am doing here. Absolutely not essential. There could be other words that you think might fit. I'm just giving you my sample answer. It is not necessary that you use the same words. So the condition is they want us to finish the lines and uh, the words should be rhyming. So here we go. Soon after dawn rises the sun. It wakes and enlivens every one. So sun and one. It's a nice creative exercise. I like this totally. It scares away the long dark night. The shining stars go out of sight. Again, night and sight. So again, the couplet arrangement with uh, AABB sequence. I'm sure that you are actually loving this. Okay. What's next? From tree to tree, birds flit and fly, searching for food with a sharp eye. So fly and eye. Beautiful, is it not? Absolutely beautiful. Uh, I am not praising myself here when I say beautiful. <laughs> I am saying whoever created the poem is simply uh, 
talented. I'm just providing you with the ending words. Okay. The birds that open now show their color as flowery, uh, sorry, as flowers they dance with beauty and splendor. So color and splendor. Now let's probably do the next one where I will give you some time for you to think. Hmm, come on, this should be interesting. Come on then, come on now. But just because this lecture is not on Zoom doesn't mean that you don't, you have no scope for creativity. Okay, I will read the, the couplet, only for the next couplet, okay? The hill slope wears a grassy green something, the curved sparkling river, it gold something. Okay. Think of something? Let me read it one more time and then reveal it. The hill slope wears a grassy green something. The curved sparkling river, it gold something. Okay, here we go. So, the hill slope wears a green grass, uh, grassy green dress. The curved sparkling river, it gold possess. If the girls did not get it, about the dress how could you not get that anyway the cock the cock then crows to give a loud i'm not going to uh, uh, test you this time okay L a loud call come on wake up folks one and all now folks l is silent remember it's not folks remember and there's exclamation so this figure of speech will be exclamatory last one let's do it let's do the same for the last couplet so you have to think about something, especially those, be honest now, those who could not come up with something for the dress and possess thing. Can you can you come up with something for this? And be honest, you can leave it in the comments if your endings are different. Okay, you can mention that in the comments. I then wake up, good morning to something. Let's all look forward to a golden something. So what you can do here is, I then wake up good morning to say, let's all look forward to a golden day. So say and day. This is wonderful. Why I like this exercise is because it was, it invited some thinking, imagination, creativity. It's not just cut, copy, paste, not to just, not just to be by hearted or some stuff. This is something interesting. All right. You can pause the video if you want to make notes. Of course, it's not necessary. You have the same words and go for something else as well. And now for the critical appreciation of the poem. Before I appreciate the poem, let me appreciate some of my viewers that in the email that do mention that, uh, sir, it's nice that you provide us with the critical appreciation. However, a word of caution is that I never want you to simply copy what I give, what I provide here, because that's not the whole idea. You have to, come on, put in your own thoughts. You can, this can act as a guide for sure. But the intention is not to do some kind of spoon feeding. As a teacher, you know, I don't like that. But anyway, thank you that you have appreciated. So let me uh, bring it on the screen in front of you. Now. There you go. So this is critical appreciation in a paragraph format. Let me read it. The poem Silver is written by Walter Jean de la Mer. Remember the pronunciation and pardon if your teacher pronounces it as uh, Walter uh, Jean de la Mare or something like that. It's not Mare also, remember. The rhyme scheme is AABB. We've talked enough about that. The lines are arranged in a couplet format. The poem has interesting figures of speech. Now, before I go ahead, I want you uh, to understand this point one more time. We have talked about it in the past, but yet again, the new way of making paragraphs. You see that I have left a line and then you start from the left hand side, probably leave a space of about two fingers from the margin and then you make a uniform start, but you leave a line essentially. That's the new way of making paragraphs. Accordingly, what is, uh, you know, this has been written what you see on your screens right now. Let me continue. The poem has interesting figures of speech. Repetition is the most common figures of speech. Silver refers to the moonlight. For instance, the line, by silver reads in a silver stream. That's the example for repetition. Alliteration, tautology. Remember L-O-G-Y is logy, guys. So alliteration, tautology are some other figures of speech that the poet has used. 
The poem describes the wonderful atmosphere on a clear moonlit night. Now, moonlit, L-I-T, moonlit, not L-I-G-H-T, moonlit night. The poet describes how things look when the cool moonlight falls on them. The beautiful and peaceful scene has been created by the poet. That's imagery, of course. The poet has made a detailed description in a very concise manner. I've already said that uh, the poem is very short, uh, not a lengthy poem by any stretch of imagination. So this is all so beautiful and so brilliant. All right, then, that's it for now. Let me come on the main camp to discuss and conclude the video. This has been a small video of about 30 minutes or so, maybe 30, 31, 32 by the time I end it. Remember that uh, there is a video that I will soon upload uh, regarding the figures of speech. That will be the figures of speech um, episode 2. And I have a request from the CBSC guys as well. Especially there was this one student who requested that sir kindly make a video for CBSE students as well because I am uh, a student who does not go for any tuitions or any coaching elsewhere. School is all I have. So yeah, sure. Time is an issue here. You have to understand that creating such uh, PPTs and notes, it does take time, but I will do my best. I'll see what I can do. All right, then do take care. It was a pleasure bringing this poem to you. I hope you enjoyed uh, what the poem had to offer and I hope I was able to do some justice with it. We will meet again real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.